Hello and welcome back everyone. Happy Thursday. Today we are going to be taking a look at the feature I think is probably going to be the most impactful from a gameplay experience changing, you know, what the current metagame is in Spheres of Influence or Sphere of Influence, which drops May 6th, um, and that is building ownership and foreign investment. I think this is going to hugely shake up the metagame. Very, very excited for it, and so let's get into it. Hello and welcome to another Victoria 3 Dev Diary. I noticed the lack of Happy Thursday terrible. After last week's look at power blocks, we're going to take a look at another major set of changes that are going to arrive with uh, Sphere of Influence and the free 1.7 update. Someone told me that it was Sphere of Influence, not Spheres of Influence, and now I feel all tripped up. But it is Sphere of Influence. Namely, a revision to, of the building ownership system and what it allows us to do for an investment. As much requested, a feature which makes its debut in 1.7. We will see the changes making impact on the visibility of ownership and the effect of pops throughout the game. Uh, and critically, what this is going to allow you to do, or what it's doing, is it's separating the ownership from the building itself. Uh, and the ownership can also be in different states, but we're going to get into it. Uh, it's 1836, that's not good. In Bavaria, a proud member of the Zulverin power block, all buildings are owned by the states or the workers themselves. Uh, capitalists, aristocrats, or clergymen no longer work in these buildings. Simpler times. And most of the shopkeepers no longer work in the pr uh, production buildings uh, directly. Uh, no longer work in the production buildings directly? Interesting. So they must be in the other buildings. Okay. Uh, in addition, the ownership production methods have been removed. Instead, ownership works on a per-level basis, allowing mixed ownership uh, uh, structure in the same building. So you might have something where some amount of them are state-owned, some are owned by capitalists, um, you know, some are government, uh, or yeah, that is state-owned. But you get the idea where the ownership will be split in a bunch of different ways. Okay. Uh, in a Worker-owned buildings, employees work for themselves, basically. So any dividends they may accumulate, they split amongst themselves. This is the default uh, uh, at game start for many countries, not all, and is a state which you can move uh, or less return to at a later stage of the game with the enactment of cooperative ownership. So it is before the instance of, uh, you know, mass accumulation of capital. They invest, they get all these machines. Um... And so it's before a simpler time where you would, you know, sell your, your you would peddle your wares, as it were. Uh, which will uh, expropriate. Expropriate, is that allowed? Uh, your privately owned buildings over time. Are we allowed to put a word like this in the dev diary? Okay. Uh, one major exception from the ownership situation at the game start is uh, our subsistence farms, which are owned by new uh, buildings, which we uh, are introducing manor houses so this is going to be one of the buildings that just uh in which all of the all of the owners are going to reside uh now they lounge around in luxury instead of slumming it with common folk good for them uh in a less refined taste and taste buildings we wouldn't want their shoes to be dirtied with uh on a subsistence farm no we wouldn't manor houses are able to own uh levels of other buildings in our case at the game uh all levels of subsistence farms in their states they pay wages uh, and dividends by collecting dividends from the buildings they own and distributing them among their employees they pay their wages not all the government wages and dividends by collecting dividends fr uh, from the building they own and distributing it amongst themselves amongst their employees and by their employees i'm assuming they're talking about the manor houses uh employees which are all capitalists is why or they're all ownership class what type and how many employees uh they have is determined by a limited set of pm so now we have this manor house and so before the dividends would be located not in it'd be located in the normal building itself but now all the dividends will be located in ownership buildings such as the manor house um so you can see that there are still uh jobs for clergymen we can decide between clergy and aristocratic management what about shopkeepers or capitalists well they work in the new financial districts building uh which is going to be so it's going to be like agrarian capitalist um or well capitalist because it's not always capitalist you can have shopkeepers uh which behave much like the manor houses they too have different employment pms can own uh levels of buildings and pay their employees by uh collecting dividends from uh own building levels uh so the building this is how i read it the buildings are the financial districts are collecting the dividends and then they pay because everyone has a base wage multiplier like um i think shopkeepers are like three 
I can't remember what shopkeep's base multiplier, wage multiplier is, but they get paid a ratio relative to the other workers. Uh, capitalists are six. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, the the intelligentsio guys, the academics is four, and so they get a base wage in addition to their dividend. Um, but okay, let's continue on. Both new buildings expand automatically depending on how many levels they own. For example, if a new level of a private factory is created, a corresponding new level of financial district is also generated. So there's always, there's the, the counting on both sides of the sheets is balanced. Um, all buildings levels that you construct are country owned. Under certain laws, so this is going to change how things work. Everything you make is owned by the state initially. Under certain laws, this status can change as uh, soon after they are finished constructing. Country-owned buildings come with reduced economies of scale bonuses and a bureaucracy cost for each level you own. But in return, they can provide additional income based on the uh, building's dividends, which partially get transferred to your treasury. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack with these two sentences here. Country-owned buildings come with reduced economy of scale bonuses. So it seems to be the case that you would rather them not be owned because you are you losing out on EOS bonuses uh, in terms of overall stimulation of your economy. However, if it's putting money in the state's pocket, uh, that is the country's pocket, uh, then maybe it's worth uh, kind of giving up this. Okay, and bureaucracy cost for each level you own. So this is new. You will also have to pay bureaucracy on buildings you're owning. Uh, that seems like uh, you're going to be eating more inefficiency. But in return, they can provide additional income based on the building's dividends, which get partially uh, partially get transferred to your treasury. Now, I don't know how it's going to work. So the, currently, the way it works with command economy is there's a command economy malice um, that gets bigger and bigger as you approach 2 billion GDP. And uh, it gets to the point where you're only transferring 20% of the dividend, but all of it gets transferred to the state. Um, but, well... 20% of that, all of it, uh, gets transferred to the state. And so if this is the case, uh, then, uh, you know, if or if it runs like this, then state-owned buildings at the very start will actually be incredibly strong. Because command economy, it's not that command economy is just like, um, uh, the government ownership is just terrible in itself. It's that the malice is too much to overcome and it's applying to the entire dividend. So... Um, this means that uh, it might be the case that early on, keeping everything state-owned is going to be really good because it gives you a lot of control. Uh, because instead of dividend, dividends getting paid to capitalists or aristocrats, they get paid to the state, and then the state can use it to just add more construction. Okay, not all buildings can be of any ownership type, of course, especially, if, uh, especially when the EOS bonuses aren't too big. Um, important to emphasize. Uh, but I guess it's also going to depend. If it costs a lot of bureaucracy, then it's not going to be ideal. Not all uh, buildings of, can be of any ownership uh, type, of course. For example, barracks or government administrations will always be country-owned. Terrible, no private armies. Uh, summing it up, there are now three types of buildings for uh, three types of ownership for any building level: worker-owned, privately-owned, country-owned. Oh, you know what? Everything's going to start off worker-owned, not country-owned. Got it. Okay. Um, if, the, if all buildings in Bavaria are owned by workers uh, or the country itself, how do the financial districts appear, you may wonder? Uh, the main way to get that to happen is the next point in our agenda. Privatization. Under, private, under privatization, where the, uh, whereby you allow, uh, you allow country-owned buildings to be sold to POPs. Uh, this uh, makes it possible for your POPs to acquire them. Depending on the type of building you are privatizing, they usually get bought by either aristocrats or capitalists using investment pool funds. So now this is how the investment pool is going to work now. You're going to build the building at the state, as the state, and instead of the investment pool just covering construction costs, the, constru uh, uh, the investment pool can be used to purchase the building outright. If you don't own any capitalists in your country yet, other, uh, other pops may step up, though, using investment pool funds to buy a building and uh, you put up for sale and become capitalist in the process, which in turn leads to the first financial district appearing. The money will be transferred from the investment pool to uh, the, your country's treasury once that happens. So this makes it so that the investment pool seemingly, it couldn't before, 
but seemingly will be able to cover um, the, uh, what is it, the wages of uh, your construction sectors. Uh, previously, only the, uh, it would only cover the goods and not the wages. The cost of buying a level is determined by its construction cost and modified by most of the economic system laws. Um, and so we can see here, scrolling down to laissez-faire, I think they're referring to this plus a capitalist investment pool contribution efficiency means that um, instead of giving 100% uh, for the cost of the building, they'll give 125%. Now, I don't know if 100% is the percent. They don't mention this in the dev diary, what the base percent is. And maybe they don't give you the full cost of the building, or maybe they'll give you extra, on, uh, ab extra and above, and this will be really, really strong. Uh, these laws also affect uh, the efficiency of these transactions, meaning how much money is lost as overhead. So this implies it's not going to be 100%. And how much is being invest in reinvested into the investment pool or treasury? Now this is a uh, this is a curious one. How much is being reinvested into the invest? No, no, this is going to be based on the dividends. I don't know if this is based on the transaction. So um, if let's say this gets bought for 125 percent price, but 40 percent of it gets put back into the investment pool. Um, that seems to be what that sentence is indicating. That might be the case of how that works. That's a bit interesting. I guess we'll see um, how that's going to work. Uh, one particularly interesting law is laissez-faire, which upon an enactment forces all your country-owned buildings to be put up for sale and will automatically do so for every new building level you construct. Aha! So laissez-faire has, for the start of the game, much to many's chagrin and much to many's disagreement, been clearly better than interventionism. And people are going to shake their fists at the air and they're going to go, no, no, generalist, you're wrong. And those people, those people are wrong, except in a very select few contexts where interventionism makes a whole lot of sense. But, like when the construction bug is around. But this does seem to make it like, look, if you can have country-owned buildings early on and really, really blast uh, a lot of construction because you're getting paid the dividends, and specifically you country-owned, like, stuff like the mines that are incredibly efficient and you let the capitalists build out like the consumer goods or something like this, this might be really strong. So this is exciting because it might just shift up the metagame. Um, but let's continue. Similarly, enactment of all other laws like cooperative ownership and command economy doesn't immediately change the ownership of all buildings, but rather can start a process that can convert your economy over time. This is also tremendously interesting too, because now, we can have a split uh, economies, right? We can have all the stuff we got under laissez-faire and then we change the law. And then now we can start going like cooperative ownership, but it doesn't swap everything all immediately, which means that what you're gonna do is gonna have long-term effects. Also, it means when you switch to cooperative ownership, it doesn't kill the capitalists, which is maybe a good thing because maybe you, maybe you want like the capitalist bonus um, or you don't want the capitalists to become marginalized but you want to stop adding to them. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But that's also, like, the the it gives you a lot more options in terms of strategy. Um, okay. Now let's take a look at how the indifferent ownership model affects uh, investments from your pops. Investment. The existing logic for how private investment pool uh, works remains the similar to before. So different pop types still have different priorities when they look at factors uh, like estimated productivity, available workforce, etc. When building, when a building is about to be constructed by private investment. So it seems to be the case that the private queue will still get to decide stuff. Um, uh, and so, like, this is, in my mind, this was up in the air because privatization, they could just buy the buildings, uh, but they're still going to construct buildings, and then it will be privately owned as soon as it completes, I assume. We randomly determine who, who is building it, uh, uh, favoring already existing financial districts and manor houses over creating new ones. That is interesting. Favoring already existing financial districts and manor houses over creating new ones. So this means maybe it's going to create tall places in your country. By the way, this entire mechanic seems to introduce the idea that playing tall can become possible now, which is very, very, very exciting. Uh, because if the ownership doesn't have to be in the state and the ownership is where the dividends are going to, the dividends are where all the juice of a uh, building is. And so if this means you can have 100 pops in London owning something 
somewhere else instead of 5,000 in London uh, and they will just receive the dividends. And not only that, they could be owning oil in like, you know, the Middle East, for example, then they just get fed all, back all the dividends. It allows you to make really, really dense, rich areas. But let's continue. Um, in a worker-owned economy, the uh, private investment pool will continue to function, but they will only expand their new buildings, not create new ones. So, um, will continue to function, but they will only expand their own buildings, not create new ones. In a worker-owned economy. So, this is where everyone's starting out. I don't know if there's going to make a new law where it's going to be like worker-owned, or maybe, maybe the worker-owned is traditionalism. I'm not sure. And then you, the state, you can have state owned under interventionism, but you can't under laissez faire. Um, we'll have to see how that shakes out. Very exciting. Uh, an important uh, fact with this system is that investments do not need to be local. This is very important because it allows you to build tall. A financial district or manor house can invest in any of your country's states, including your colonies overseas. This system will create a flow of money from the colonies to your homelands, a stronger centralization of wealth and power, and will uh, end the status of colonies' pops, making more money than your pops at home. Also, very critically, main problem with the buildings in your colonies employing up, as of right now, in terms of mechanics, is that often they can't find the qualifications to employ the capitalists. Well, if the capitalists are all back home, where your non-discriminated pops are, then this isn't a problem. Also, um, if you are building... Look, the capital, most capitalists, most buildings, um, without any labor-saving PMs, employ around 5,000 pops, and of those 5,000 pops, 100 are capitalists, if you're a capitalist-owned building. This is 1 50th of the total, you know, uh, of the total, not of the total people employed in the building. If you just decide to, like, be super discriminatory, and you're like, okay, we don't need the migration, we don't need it, you can still build way taller if, you know, you are using your pops much more efficiently because they're all ownership pops because they're owning in some place overseas or they're owning in your subject thing. So this is probably also going to make discriminatory runs way, way, way better. Um, whereas, like, right now, multiculturalism is full meta. Uh, of course, the local non-investments will also come with some challenges with regards to other countries. Uh, it looks like Prussia has heard about the option and is starting investing in your country. Oh, no! Um, and so here we are in Bavaria, just minding our business and Prussia is buying some furniture manufacturers which is going to be a mixed bag because this is going to deep peasant your pops uh, it's going to provide value for you um, but what's the values in buildings is creating in one of two ways um, it's created by wages wages are positive value and it's also created by um, dividends which are positive value most of the positive value is in the dividend and so when someone builds something in your country they generated a little bit of value for you because your pops are moving from the sub farms to um, we, we're going to have to take a closer look at this mathematically in the spreadsheet and such, but you're moving pops from the sub farms to uh, work on the uh, in the building, which I think has overall net positive value, but it's way, way more positive value for the person who built the building because the dividends are really good. And also, it cuts you off from being able to build the labor. Okay, so this brings us to foreign investment. Um, there are new few, uh, <laughs> there are a few ways to acquire foreign investment rights. Redacted, that's my favorite way. Uh, first of all, redacted. Of all the owners, overlords can always invest in their subjects. This is part of 1.C, 1.7, uh, update and will allow you forward investment where it matters most, even if you do not own spheres of influence, which of course implies or basically states other methods are not going to work. And so, um, you will have to subjugate if you're not going to buy the DLC, you will have to subjugate to build in that country. Um, which you can't try the economic hegemon takeover of another nation um, uh, if you don't have this. I don't even know if that works. We'll see. Uh, then there are three diplomatic packs which you can uh, which can, you can use if you have bought the expansion. Mutual investment rights, yuck. Uh, we don't like that, which allows both countries to invest in each other. One directional investment rights, hell yeah, brother. In either direction, so you can either demand to be allowed to invest in their country or in, offer another country to invest in yours. You know what? I'm going to be like, day one, I'm just going to be like, oh, China, we get to invest in your country and you don't get to do anything. Oh, we're going to build a million rice farms because they're so OP per construction and then we're just gonna have the ownership back at home same with Japan Japan we're gonna split you open like a coconut open that market because we're gonna we want the rice warlord except the warlord is gonna live in London the truth hurts um, there's also a power block principle that deals with foreign investment uh, which on the tier 3 consequence of uh, being able to invest in any member country 
Um, so uh, po uh, power block principle, we talked about power blocks last week, gives foreign investment, which allows you to invest in any member country. Um, being able to invest in any member country. Is that the leader gets to invest in any member country or any member gets to invest in another? Okay. No matter how you got the investment rights by your <laughs> character stick, uh, you and your pops will also be able to invest in the be in, in, able to invest in the target country. You and your pops implies that the government, as the government, you can just buy a bunch of the buildings up. Um, and then if you're on laissez-faire, then your pops can later buy the buildings. Maybe this is how this works, but this is very exciting. Uh, private investment does consider foreign states as potential targets for their expansions, allowing them to build profitable buildings more easily. Um, so here's a weird one. Your private queue can build in other countries. And this is maybe something you don't want. I, d I don't know if you want your private queue building in other countries. That's like a weird one. Uh, because you get the most value from a building if it's built in your country. Because remember, value is created at the site of the wage and at the site of the dividend. But maybe it's the case that it's, you just don't care enough. I don't know, this is gonna be exciting. Also, it, it, is de-peasanting really that valuable if you're not getting the the uh, the dividend? Probably not anywhere near as what it was before because you, you have to, do, I mean, you're gonna, we're, we're going to have to do a spreadsheet for wages because it really depends on the wage multiplier. Um, wage multipliers are a lot higher for places like steel and motors, but um, okay. As nice it is, as it is that Prussia has invested in new buildings in Bavaria, I don't think we can let it, them get away with the, uh, diverting the profits to Berlin instead of our own population. Terrible, which leads to nationalization. Nationalization allows you to take control of foreign assets in your country, which means there's going to be a risk every time you invest... I'm assuming the AI is going to be really bad at defending their interests in this regard and is not going to nationalize as aggressively as they should, but this is a risk. You cannot nationalize other countries' assets as long as they possess a foreign investment rights in your country, which of course <laughs> brings uh, the notion, hey, if we just revoke those rights, we can just take everything we want. Once that is no longer the case, i.e. Bavaria has left the uh, Zolverin power block, you can peacefully nationalize by building levels in your country. For that, you're going to need a sum of money uh, from your treasury. Notice this says peacefully. Similar, uh, similarly to privatization, the sum is determined by the construction costs plus modifiers from laws. You will also be able to nationalize your own POPs building levels, both worker-owned and privately owned, which leads to maybe interesting strategies where, early on, you really, really want to own the hyper-efficient buildings. And then you transition maybe late game to more capitalist orientation because you want to avoid the malice. Um, I don't even know. Well, the capitalists give a free money modifier, but yeah, I mean, the, the fact that this is like, it's difficult to think through what's best um, is it makes it very interesting to me. If you'd like to take ownership, nationalization is not seen positively by the effect of pops and will of course radicalize them, yeah. Uh, but what if the Bavarian coffers are empty and yet you still want to take over that juicy furniture manufacturer is owned by Prussia? Where well, there's always an alter alternative. Pay them? I don't think so. No monetary compensation. Give? No monetary compensation. You can demand the nationalization of a country's assets in your country if they accept... Uh, if they accept, so this is a diplomatic demand, their building's levels ownership changes to your country. If they don't, you can try and enforce it as a war goal. If you are successful, you will also remove their foreign investment rights to your country in addition to being able to take control of the buildings in your country. Big nice. Um, building registry. To visualize all these new mechanics, we're introducing the building registry, which allows, uh, allows you a customizable look at your country's situation, which is going to be really good because now everything's going to be really confusing because we're going to have logging camps in Bavaria owned in Berlin um, and etc mostly etc and so having a tool to kind of sort through all of this is going to be useful and making sense of everything so that's going to be nice that's going to be big nice this is a major new UI, similar to the census data window, which comes with a lot of functionality to filter available data. Only show buildings outside your country? Sure. So you could be like, hey, what are all the buildings we own outside our country? See all the buildings that are owned by POPs and which are not currently hiring, uh, but are not fully employed? No problem, which this is going to be great as well. Um, but okay. And then lots of filter groups to browse through. We have filters. 
uh, gefilter fish, grouping, building group, building, state, location, controller, employment, cash reserves, subsidies, incorporation, subsistence, construction, size cap, input shortage, hiring status, construction. That's a weird one. Are they currently constructing? I mean, there's only four construction costs for now. We hope you find this as useful as we do. Big nice. You can access it available uh, via the bottom of the button on the buildings panel. So building registry down here. Uh, implications for directly controlled uh, investment pool rule. Um, the, the short answer to the, all this is that uh, direct control investment is going to be dying because it doesn't make sense with the new system. Uh, because it no longer makes sense for players to be both in charge of public and private investments simultaneously, and as such, direct controlled investment pool has re been removed from 1.7 and beyond. Um, okay. We're going to kind of skip through it because it's kind of just saying we can't do it, which makes sense. Uh, I would like to end today's Dev Diary by wishing you a happy Thursday, which I forgot to do at the start of the Dev Diary. Much apologies. Oh, no, wait. He misspelled all of that. By providing a short outlook for what these changes will be able to enable us to do in the future. The main thing here is affecting companies. And this is also very exciting, too. This is something that people have been talking about, mentioning, and hoping for. Uh, the way we have reworked ownership allows us to create a company headquarters building which can own specific building levels of industries they care about, uh, determining its profitability from, and providing their throughput bonus only to these. So, uh, and I'm thinking that with some of the stuff that, you know, that we have coming in, like lobbies, you could maybe have lobbies by, on behalf of the company, sometime down the line. They're saying this probably isn't going to be in 1.7, but they're introducing that this is something they're aware of, they're thinking about, and they want to implement. While we cannot provide a concrete timeline for the change at this point, but we can tell you that the DLC drops on May 6th. Um, is, it is something we would like to tackle for one of our next free updates. Uh, and so by next free updates, I assume they mean what is likely to be three months uh, from the release of Sphere of Influence. And that's it for today. Happy Thursday. Oh. Check back next week when Mikhail is going to walk you through uh, what changes in 1.7 and Sphere of Influence bring to the relations of interaction between overlords and subjects. That's going to be subjects interactions, including how these foreign investment mechanics relate to your grip on over your extended empire. Big nice. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube algorithm thing. And other than that, other than that, have a happy Thursday, everyone. Bye-bye now.